After an unprecedented hype boosted by the biggest mainstream advertising campaign in company history for the Icon vs Icon match with the two biggest names the industry has ever seen facing each other for the first time ever on the biggest stage in the business, The Rock and Hulk Hogan with massive pressure to match the all-time high expectations ended up justifying their cemented reputation to unprecedentedly top it to deliver a performance that will go down in history as arguably the greatest match in the history of the industry, taking 68,000 people at the Toronto Sky Dome on a ride never seen before with the consensus of everybody in the stadium including Rock and Hogan in the ring being that it was the hottest atmosphere they've ever seen as Hogan opened draw to one of the greatest ovations ever seen in any genre, with the Montreal crowd which saw a lot of them in either classic Hulkamania or NWO shirts from the past two generations, giving Hogan another all-time memorable reaction to follow last night for several minutes to open the show, with Hogan whose run on top looked to be over in the past two years, as he often did in the past two decades rebounding big to have a memorable 24 hours as any other in his career with Hogan thanking the crowd for the massive support while saying that someday Hogan and Rock will meet again for one more match, bringing out Rock to the ring with him observing the potentially hostile environment to a massive mixed reaction after adjusting on the spot last night to work as a heel in large parts of the match, and with Rock and Hogan in the ring again 10 minutes into the show in front of the rabbit crowd in one of the most unique situations in show history. Raw kicked off huge for the WrestleMania 18 follow-up to open with a 4.7 rating, the highest rated opening segment on Raw since August 2001, with Rock as he did last night subtly played the crowd with the idea of a turn before masterfully turning the mixed reaction into a massive ovation in a few minutes, as with the crowd reactions during the build-up to the match indicating a split crowd but generally more pro-Rock. The history of Hulk Hogan in Toronto going back over 15 years along with the nostalgia factor of seeing Hogan back at WrestleMania for the first time in almost a decade, saw the unique reaction on the night with Vince McMahon seeing what's happening in town over the weekend, sending Hogan back home to Tampa, Florida in the company's private jet on the day before the event to pick up his red and yellow attire and changing the original post-match plan to a Hogan babyface turn with him teaming with Rock against Hall and Nash to break from the NWO, with Rock thanking Hogan and the crowd for being part of the greatest match of all time, agreeing for the rematch at any time before leading Hogan to rip off the NWO shirt to officially end his run with the group just as Hall and Nash came out for the response with them after setting up the angle for WrestleMania with McMahon during contract negotiations months in advance, being notified by Vince on Saturday in Toronto on the changes with Hall instead of going over Austin as was originally planned, said to lose the match to go along with the Hogan turn, with Nash after mostly being in the background to Hogan and Hall in the past month cutting a heated promo on Hogan calling him a traitor for turning on the group and with the segment already including countless talking points one of the biggest ones was next during the Rock vs Nash exchange, with Rock mocking Nash's former Diesel character in an off-the-cuff comment to legitimately stir things up with Nash backstage, setting up a mega main event for tonight with Rock and Hogan teaming for the first time ever against Hall and Nash to close the all-time great 25 minutes segment to a standing ovation from the crowd spiking raw huge to jump over a million viewers throughout to a 5.5 rating with over 7 million viewers already by 9:25 p.m. the highest rated full quarter hour on a raw broadcast in 7 months with the second segment of the night just starting at 9:30 p.m. the third quarter featured two back-to-back -back matches first with new IC champion Van Dam coming out to a big reaction to retain over Christian followed by Trish vs Lita combined going 5 minutes with the company sending out a press release the day after the show with WrestleMania 18 breaking records as the highest grossing event in history breaking the gate record set last year in addition to over 35,000 people attending the Access event during the weekend in Toronto, and after talking about the split for almost a year with plans and the overall direction for it changing on almost a monthly basis after first being targeted for July 2001 with WCW taking over Raw followed by two more confirmed dates that ended up being pushed back in January of this year. 
Linda McMahon in a special announcement from WWF headquarters finally announced the official date for the brand extension with the first ever draft set for next Monday in one of the most important shows for the company in the short and longer term, officially announcing Ric Flair heading Raw and Vince McMahon heading SmackDown. And with one of the greatest promo segments of all time opening the show less than 20 minutes ago. Raw next continued with the mega-hot first hour with perhaps one of the rare few segments able to potentially keep up, as Vince McMahon walked to the ring in front of the Montreal crowd for his first promo at the Molson Center since November 1997, coming out to the expected massive heat for the response to Linda's brand split announcement saying that they are gonna miss him on Raw with him set to leave the show he created to head SmackDown on network television with the Montreal crowd taking over the segment mid-promo to send Vince off Raw with the goodbye song in another classic moment on the night, bringing out Ric Flair saying that Vince created the show but the Raw brand will go on and never skip a beat without him taking the spotlight on the show every Monday, and with Vince and Flair bumping Raw back to a 7-month quarter high 5.5 rating. In another scenario this segment was set to feature another historic moment with Bret Hart being approached about making the return in front of the Canadian crowds in Toronto and Montreal, and with him turning down the offer last month Vince McMahon in interviews with the Canadian press over the weekend responded to Bret's decision saying that despite how he feels personally he would always do what's best for business, saying that a small percentage of the inside audience still remembers the Montreal incident and that he went through the right diplomatic channels to invite Brett on a confidential basis before Brett ended up revealing it publicly in his weekly Calgary Sun column, taking a shot back at Brett saying that he has his own agenda and needs psychological help, while after getting the expected you screwed Brett chant during the promo. Vince clearly not in the mood to talk about it on Raw subtly signaled to Flair to continue the promo over the chant and not mention it on air, with Vince responding to the chant moments later in Mr. McMahon mode during the commercial break saying that he will do it again, ending the TV segment with Vince getting the first draft pick next Monday before punching Flair and him reversing it to a figure four. Along with the ending of the McMahon Flair segment Raw's top of the hour quarter saw a Kurt Angle and Booker vs Edge and Kane tag match going 4 minutes with Edge set for a major singles push pinning Angle for the finish, and with Hogan and Rock again the focal point of the show tonight after the past month of the entire WrestleMania advertising campaign built around them as the two biggest stars in history. A major issue was developing in the background over the past few weeks that culminated on the night with Steve Austin after not liking his recent positioning on the TV product playing second fiddle to Rock and Hogan along with his match with Hall being placed fifth from the top on the Mania pay-per-view, walked out unannounced to fly back home to Texas on Sunday night without notifying anybody of him not showing up for the Montreal Raw, leading to changes to the original Raw script with Austin's segment being scrapped from the show on short notice to put his future status in question heading into one of the highest profile weeks of television for the company with the brand split set for next Monday, with the plan for months since the idea of the brand split came up was to have Rock and Austin each leading a brand on Raw and SmackDown along with building up to touring a cruise on the road with close to equal star power to run the big markets. While as the future of Austin is set to be heavily talked about during the week, another sign for the future took place on Raw at 10.20pm with Brock Lesnar after being talked about in OVW as one of the biggest prospects to be a major player for the past two years, making his WWF television debut to take out everyone involved in a Snow vs Maven hardcore title match. Coming out through the crowd with Paul Heyman making his first TV appearance as Lesnar's manager since being fired and kicked out of the building by Vince last November. Raw's second hour which saw another angle before the main event with the Dudleys turning on Stacy to powerbomb her through a table, averaged 6.7 million viewers on the night in the third most watched hour of Raw in seven months only behind the 10 to 11 p.m. hours on January 7th and February 18th. 
while SmackDown on Thursday in the final show to WrestleMania rebounded a million viewers from the UPN preemptions of last week to 6.6 .6 million viewers with the second hour peaking with over 7.4 million viewers for the final Hogan Rock confrontation and the two angles for the Hall Austin and Hunter Jericho matches and the overall second hour averaging 6.9 million viewers with new undisputed champion Triple H coming out for his follow-up title win promo to open Raw's final quarter, as Hunter after not being able to follow the Rock vs Hogan match to close WrestleMania to an underwhelming reaction in comparison after heavily pushing behind the scenes for the title match to go last, getting a big ovation from the Montreal crowd tonight in a segment setting up the title rematch for next Monday's Big Raw as after growing backlash to get Stephanie off television with her role on the TV product massively overexposed with no justification to her actual performance, including Vince being asked about it in several interviews over the weekend and the company itself acknowledging it with Ric Flair telling Vince in the promo earlier that he used Raw to push his miserable daughter down viewers' throats. Hunter made the challenge to Stephanie and Jericho who only appeared on the show in a backstage segment arriving to the building for a title handicap match with Stephanie leaving the company if they lose. With the outsiders in the ring following the final commercial break at 10.59 p.m., Hogan came out for his first entrance in the WWF post the NWO run to another surprise, walking out to his classic Jimi Hendrix Voodoo Child song which reportedly cost WCW over six figures for the temporary rights to it during Hollywood Hogan's original NWO run, followed by Rock coming out seconds from the top of the hour to kick off the match already in the overrun as after massive hype throughout the night for the match built on Hogan and Rock teaming up for the first time ever against the Outsiders in one of the biggest matches in show history, the main event went 6 minutes past 11 p.m. to draw a big 5.8 rating in Raw's highest peak segment since August 2001, as Raw overall which also showed a huge viewership increase in Canada's TSN of almost 50% on the average for the year spiked huge to draw a 5.3 rating in the highest rated draw broadcast since August 6 of last year, with the Hogan and Rock vs Nash and Hall tag match seeing the outsiders bailing out of the ring for the finish to build for the payoff in a future match with Rock and Hogan standing in the ring to close one of the hottest draws in history heading into what is said to be a game-changing draft show next Monday.